Last week, I found this awesome container. I thought it would be perfect for a terrarium inspired by a cloud forest because of how large it is. After I obtained it, I got to work immediately once I remembered about this rough cut cedar slab I had in storage. I knew it was a diamond in the rough and just required some work. The mill marks were pretty significant, so I decided to send it through the planer to quickly even out the surfaces. I scraped loose bits of bark off the edges as well. Of course I had to sand it. I took my time with various grits to get a perfectly smooth top. In the workshop, you can see how the container would rest on the slab. I just had to account for this LED light. I drilled a hole through in the location where it should go. Then I created a larger hole on the opposite side to countersink the bolt that holds the hardware in place. Even at this point, I thought it looked great, but I knew it would look even better with a simple step. This beeswax oil not only conditioned the slab for use, but it changed its appearance drastically. Additionally, I put felt pads on the bottom to protect the countertop, reattached the light, and it looked great. I intended for the whole design to center around this container. It was going to include a pump for waterfalls, a mist maker, and much more. In all honesty though, it just wasn't working out. I tried various techniques and realized it just wasn't possible to make something as detailed as I wanted with what I had available because of the container's shape. Knowing when to quit is half the battle sometimes, but I still wanted to make a terrarium that captured the essence of my original idea. That's where this cylinder vase came in. It's the same height as the other, fits on the stand, and as you could imagine would be much easier to work in. Originally, I intended to make a mini landscape, but this one will showcase a snapshot or slice of a cloud forest instead. This will make more sense later, but because of that, I decided to omit the waterfall feature. I'll still include the mist maker though, which will dictate how everything is laid out. I took measurements of the inside, transferred those to cork bark, and cut it down to the appropriate height. Then I sawed it in half. I wanted something that would hide and allow the mist maker to be accessible, and although this did exactly that, it took up too much room. Funny enough though, the scraps from the other side were a better fit. They take up far less room, hide the mist maker, and add great texture to the backdrop. That said, they're not stable. This will be a fairly low maintenance setup though, so the solution was quite simple, natural clay cat litter. When mixed with water, it holds its shape quite well and has a plethora of uses within nature design. You just have to be sure that it's 100% clay with no additives. Once hydrated, it can be rolled up and used as a natural adhesive. Here, I pressed it between the glass and cork, which held everything well. I just had to wipe off the excess. As long as it remains wet, which obviously won't be a problem in this environment, then it will continue to do its job. It may not be as strong as foam or silicone, but it's a great quick and natural option for builds like this. I set this up so that I could remove the mist maker for maintenance down the road. However, I decided to include this EVA foam tube as well. It was something I made for the previous concept, which should make it easier to fill gaps with other materials without blocking the mist. I left space under it to maximize water access. I was curious though, exactly how long would this take to create the cloud mist effect? After about 5 minutes it got to its highest point, which is about halfway. If I'll be honest, I wish it was higher and would billow down instead. However, there weren't many options to make that happen in a container of this size, which would be easily maintained. Anyway, with that addressed, I was able to bring the scape to life. First I stuffed filter sponge that was left over from before in spaces behind the cork. Then I cut cargo mesh fabric into strips. This wicks water extremely well. Laying this within the cork and down into the false bottom, which will be full of water, will cause the background to remain wet at all times. In addition to that, I rehydrated sphagnum moss. I pressed it into the cracks over the mesh to create a proper growing medium for plants. Considering the need for water in the false bottom, I decided to use a scrap of metallomat to create a void. All of that open space within made it a great option. It looks terrible from the front of the terrarium though, so I filled the gap with black lava rock for a cleaner aesthetic. I then topped off this with sphagnum moss to create a barrier. A key feature I intended to make since the beginning was self-watering moss vines. To do that I have moisture wicking ropes and bonsai wire. I threaded the wire into the rope. Once the desired length was achieved, I poked it through the side and wrapped it around the rope for stability. I repeated this on the opposite side and for the other vines. These might not look like much, but they'll wick water and remain wet at all times, making them perfect for moss. Plus, they're flexible and hold their shape because of the wires. 
Of course, this will all be hidden as well. I used fishing line to wrap java moss around the outside. This process took a while to get right, but there's no denying how awesome these vines look, especially when combined with other elements like these jungle vines. I set these in a simple formation that would serve a similar function to a key element, which dictates the placement of everything else. Next up were the vines. I buried their exposed ends deep in the false bottom to optimally wick water. However, it wasn't easy to get them to look natural alongside the jungle vines. After some tinkering though, I was pleased with the result. As you know though, the plants will truly make this pop. I have a plethora of cool items here, most of which are epiphytes and vining plants. I always imagine ferns with stuff like this, which is why I included Bulbitis deformis and fern moss. These alongside the texture of Mark Gravia rectiflora went a long way to create the forest aesthetic. I wanted a proper showcase plant as well, and what better than a mini jungle jewel, Plurothallus rubella, a mini orchid. Obviously it doesn't have blooms at the moment, and this isn't the same species, but here's an example of micro orchids I've had in the past. They're truly a sight to be seen. Selaginella uncinata was great for a pop of texture. The floor of this terrarium is not intended to be a key feature of the design. With that in mind, I filled it primarily with fern moss and tropical liverwort, both of which could grow directly on the sphagnum moss barrier. I decided Anubius non petite would look good down here as well. And what plant could complete the look better than Ficus pumila quercifolia? Inspiration for these projects often comes from a container or an environment I'd like to replicate, but in this case it was both. It's simultaneously a lot different and very close to what I imagined. I think the rope vines really help tie it all together, making it look like a proper jungle. Mature growth from the plants will do that as well. I can only imagine what it will look like when the orchid is in bloom, the moss is filled in, and the vines have taken hold everywhere. There is a feature we can appreciate now though. The mist. I've made a lot of jungle setups, and I think this is by far one of the best at capturing that feel. I love how the mist envelops the environment as it dances around the foliage and through the branches. It adds a certain level of mystery and obscurity that's indicative of the forest. And although it's happening within a small glass container, I believe it truly captures the essence of the bigger picture. 